Hi, my name is David Schreier. I'm a medical doctor and sleep wake scientist at the Department of Neurology in Bern, Switzerland. And today, together with Jelena Skoruchak, who is a postdoctoral researcher at the University Hospital and University of Zurich, also in Switzerland, we would like to talk about the wake sleep transition zone and in particular micro sleep episodes. There is no universal definition of microsleep episode. In general, microsleep episodes are understood as short periods or episodes of sleep, assuming that the basic state is wakefulness. The opposite would be an arousal. So you can see on a simplified model at the bottom left that arousals would be representing short periods of wakefulness, assuming the basic state is sleep. The gold standard for defining wakefulness and sleep is still the EEG, which is why you can find the y-axis in this plot representing the frequency. So as a rule of thumb, you can say that faster frequencies, particularly alpha, is representing wakefulness and slower frequencies, as for example theta or delta, are representing sleep. A recent work was aiming to better characterize those microsleep episodes in this transition between wakefulness and sleep and to develop a systematic approach on how to visually score the EEG in this transition period. The burn criteria define a continuous high resolution visual scoring of this wake sleep transition zone particularly scoring for microsleep episodes. However, you can imagine that this wake-sleep transition zone cannot solely be uh, classified or divided into wakefulness and microsleep episodes. There are other time periods which are difficult and do not match exact definitions of wakefulness and microsleep episodes, which is why we also introduced the categories of microsleep episode candidates and also episodes of drowsiness. You can find the clear definitions of those categories in one of our papers indicated below. One of the main differences between the burn criteria and the ASN criteria is that in the burn criteria, you can score micro sleep episodes as short as one second, and you continuously score and not like the ASN criteria where you score in 50 or 30 second periods. As you can see in the graph at the bottom left again, micro sleep episodes can occur very frequently and very early in contrast to sleep onset defined according to the ASN criteria. Nevertheless, in several patients in this study, you can see that the micro sleep episodes occur very shortly before sleep onset according to the ASM criteria. Many of you might ask yourselves what is the benefit or advantage of scoring micro sleep episodes or better refining this scoring within this wake sleep transition period. One advantage could be that micro sleep episodes as you saw in the graph before that they could be an indicator or biomarker for sleepiness. However, this is still yet unclear and we need to further investigate that. Nevertheless, the scoring of microsleep episodes, the visual scoring by human um, experts, is very time consuming. It is difficult and it takes quite a long time until you get yourself trained in scoring those microsleep episodes. This is the main reason why we were trying in the same project to also approach microsleep episodes or this identification of microsleep episodes by automatic detection, including machine learning, which is what Jelena Skoruchak is going to talk about now. Manual scoring of only a few seconds long microsleep episodes is challenging and very time consuming. Therefore, an automatic detection of microsleep episodes would be beneficial 
as it would lead to a faster and more standardized procedure. We developed a method for automatic detection of microsleep episodes based on burn scoring criteria and using classical machine learning such as support vector machines and random forest, as well as state-of-the-art deep learning algorithms, in particular long short-term memory neural network, which also showed the best performance. All classification algorithms were developed based on expert scoring and engineered features. Data of 53 patients were used for the training and 23 for the testing. And we proved that microsleep episodes can be reliably detected with machine learning tools. Our algorithms are well suited for semi-automatic detection in a clinical setting. Um, where uh, in the first step, uh, microsleep episodes would be automatically detected by the algorithm and uh, in the ne next step, uh, validated by experts. We also applied our best performing algorithm to 18 healthy sleep restricted uh, participants in a driving simulator setting. Our aim was to assess uh, whether the algorithm uh, developed uh, on patient data in maintenance of wakefulness tests can be applied to healthy population in a driving simulator. And indeed, automatic detection of microsleep episodes uh, worked well. Our second aim was to check whether microsleep episodes were correlated with driving performance. We found correlations between duration of automatically detected uh, microsleep episodes and driving performance. For example, duration of microsleep episodes correlated with duration of off-road events in the driving simulator. Interestingly, many microsleeps and off-road events occurred before sleep onset. These correlations may reflect a close and time-critical relationship between sleepiness and driving performance, uh, which is valuable for fitness to drive assessment. We developed a burn scoring criteria for scoring of microsleep episodes and a method for automatic detection of these episodes based on the developed scoring criteria. We proved reliable performance of our algorithms in patients and sleep-restricted healthy participants. And we highlight the importance of detection and scoring of microsleep episodes as they occur before sleep onset according to the ASM criteria and are correlated with driving simulator accidents. The algorithm and uh, data set are uh, openly available and for details please refer to our publications. Last but not least, our findings point to the direction that microsleep episodes might serve as a biomarker for sleepiness, which could help in the differential diagnosis but also for treatment control. However, future research should include higher spatial resolution of EEG recordings, but also include not only EEG-defined microSEEP episodes, but also behavior-based and performance-based microSEEP episodes and comparison of all those different modalities with each other. In case of any questions, suggestions or criticism, feel free to contact us or any of the other colleagues which were involved in all those projects and are acknowledged just afterwards.